Tell your neighbor, I'm glad you're here with us today. Can you tell them that? Amen. I'm glad you are all here today. And I want to uh, tell you this before I forget it. So next week, of course, is Christmas Eve. We have a, a, a morning service. We're going to have communion. So I want to be here for that. And then Christmas Eve at 7, we'll have a candlelight service. So... Be sure and uh, make plans to attend that and start a tradition. It's a good thing to do. Uh, we'll just keep going from now on. Uh, and we're going to have uh, punch and cookies afterwards, so we're squeezing in dessert. And if you want to bring a cake or something, I'm always down for that. So. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, you know, uh, let's do this real quick before I start this. Hit, cover up your heart. Lord, and make it a prayer, all right? Lord, give me eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive all the good things you have for me. And tell your neighbor, you too, right? Amen. Thank you. Well, Wednesday, we had an absolutely awesome service. Those that were here, raise your hand. What did you think about that? Awesome. That was I have never been a part of a Wednesday night service with that kind of an anointing. People were healed. Lives were changed. I mean, it was simply amazing. We had a man here from a pastor from Mexico who couldn't speak English. So listen, God can work outside of our languages, okay? We had a translator, and he gave a message and like I said, the, the power of the Lord was really here. Yeah. Uh, we have an awesome time here on Wednesday. I want to encourage you to be here. Because you're really missing the boat by not being here on Wednesday. If you're working, I understand. If you're sick, I understand. But I'm telling you, God is moving. Amen? Right, right. He right. is right. really moving in our congregation. Praise the Lord. So anyway, we're going to be in uh, Isaiah 9 today. And... Uh, We'll just read this real quick here. Uh, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let's just pray real quick. Father, I just pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would fall upon us here today. Father, give us more of what we had Wednesday. Give us, fill us, fill our cup, Father, until we can't take any more. I just pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're going to talk about a mighty God. And this is away from the traditional Christmas story. Uh, but I feel like a lot of us know that story. So permit me today to get away from that part of it because I want you to see something different today. So uh, if you're visiting, you've never been here before, you're welcome to say amen, you're welcome to say hallelujah, you're welcome to say come on. I love it when people give me feedback and encourage me. So uh, <laughs> how many today know that God is a mighty God? Would you say Amen. I'm going to say it again over here. How many know that God is a mighty God? Amen. Amen. If you'd have been here Wednesday, you would have saw the mighty God in action. So I want to talk about the mighty God today. And I want you to listen to what Jeremiah has to say about God. And, and I love how Jeremiah starts this out. He goes, Ah. Everyone say, Ah. Ah. And, and this is how he said it, okay? You gotta put some emotion in this, okay? He says, ah, come on, one more time over here. Come on over here. Ah! Ah, Lord God. Can we say it over here now? Ah, Lord God. You see how he's speaking here. He's not just saying, oh Lord God. He's saying, oh Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your what? Great power and outstretched arm. And let's all say this last one together. There is nothing too hard for you. Say it like you mean it. There's nothing too hard for you. Oh, mighty God. That's what I'm going to be talking about. Is Here's the thing. Maybe you came to church today. 
and you've got something health-wise that you can't, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty there. Uh, we, we took blankets to the nursing home. The number one prayer request was for healing. Yeah. Help me to feel better, God. The second one broke my heart. Please, God, let my family come visit me. If you've got family in the nursing home, I don't care what you're doing. You need to stop and set aside an hour to go visit these people yeah. who have no one visiting them. It broke my heart. But that's, that's what Jeremiah said. And he goes... Listen, ah, oh, God, nothing's too hard for you, you mighty God. And like I said, you might have uncertainty, you might have poor health, you might have career issues. I don't, maybe your, your family's a mess, maybe your child's a mess. I, I don't know what's going on, you know. I don't know who I'm, who I'm talking to here. But listen, is there anyone today knows that God is a mighty God and He can take care of of what you got going on. Amen. Yeah, clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Praise His holy name. Listen, nothing is too hard for God. Tell your neighbors, nothing's too hard for God. I'm telling you. Isaiah 9, 6. Mighty God. You know what the, the Hebrew word for this is? It's so awesome. I studied all this this week. El Gabor. I might not be exactly pronouncing that right. Roger, you call him. Am I close? How would you pronounce it? El Gabor. El Gabor, all right. You know what that means? El is God, and mighty is Gabor. Think about it. You serve an El Gabor. And, and, there, and what that really means is, is that he's a champion for you. He's, he's, a, a, he's a strong hero for you. Your hero is mighty God, El Gabor. Can you say that? I, I, want, I want everybody in on this. Look at your neighbor and say, El Gabor. El Gabor. Yeah, that's, that's good. Listen to what Matthew says uh, in 123. I think I put that one on there, didn't I? Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and, his, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated... God with us. Now we all know this, this verse of Scripture here. But what I'm trying to get you to see today is this baby in a manger was more than just a baby in a manger. He was El Gabor. He was, he was the great and mighty God where nothing, nothing is absolutely beyond His control. In Colossians, uh, Paul told the, Colossians, the church of Colossae this, for in Christ, that's Jesus, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And I thought about this. And, you know, years ago, uh, the power went out uh, one night at our house. And, and, you know, I don't know about how you sleep, but in my bedroom at night, it sounds like a hurricane. We've got one of these air machines, and it's just blowing that air constantly, and, and, and I sleep like a baby. So when the thing stops in the middle of the night, I know that the power has, has gone out. Anyone been there and done that besides? I don't know if any of you sleep like that or not, but I do. And so here, here's the thing. Uh, the transformer had got knocked down, down the road, they said. And so it knocked out all the power to the house. But, but what I'm trying to say is, do you know what transformers do? I, I sort of looked at it this week. You have the main line that has all, I mean, it has a huge amount. I don't, even, I, don't, I don't even know how much power it's got. But it's carrying all this power, and the transformers reduce the power so that it can come into your home. Otherwise, when you plug something into an outlet, it would just blow it all to pieces. I mean, it'd melt your house down. And that's what transformers do. They regulate all that power. And if you could think of it today, as Jesus is like a transformer. Okay? You see, we couldn't approach God because we were messed up. We were corrupted. We were sinful. And He can't tolerate sin. And so Jesus is like a transformer and, and He reduced the power of God so that we can see God. When you see Christ, you've seen God. And uh, I believe it was in uh, Exodus 33. Yeah, here we go. 
he said, God told Moses, you cannot see my face. Why? Because no man can see me. You can't look upon God. If you stop and think about what happened to Moses later on, he went up the mountain, you know, and stayed up there 40 days. And what happened to him in that? He came back down, you remember? And he was shining so bright. They, they were scared to death of him because he had been in the presence of God all this time. And they had to cover him up because it, it, it scared them. And so that's what God told him there. In, in Judges, uh, listen to what Samson's uh, parents said. He said unto his wife, We shall surely die because, why? And listen, they didn't see God, okay? They saw an angel. Uh, God is an angel. So they didn't really lay eyes on the full power of God. They just saw an angel like, like God. And he said, man, we're, we're going to die. We're going to see God here. So Jesus is like a transformer, and he reduces the power of God so that we can see him on earth. In Hebrews uh, 2, 9, I think it was, put that one on there. We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. So think about that. The, you saw, they saw Christ, but they really didn't see him in the full scope and power of God. He was reduced a little bit lower than the angels here. Paul, uh, Paul says in Philippians that God uh, humbled him, that Jesus humbled himself as a man. So he's fully God, he's fully man. He was God-man. And uh, so Jesus is the transformer. In John, John 1, i got a lot of scriptures today. He said, No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is Himself God, and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made Him known. And uh, He told Matthew, in Matthew, Jesus said, All power and authority is given to me. And so whoever sees me, uh, sees the Father. Amen. So this is who Christ was. Uh, that's how I know that He is the mighty God. Someone say the mighty God. The mighty mighty God. God. El Gabor. The mighty God. I want you to know that name today when you live. I mean, when you leave. In, in a dark time, Isaiah prophesies this in, uh, in 9. He said, Unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor El Gabor, Everlasting Father of Prince of Peace. That's what Isaiah said. So no matter how dark the situation is in your life, no matter what the uncertainty is in your life, no matter what you're facing in your career, or even within you, maybe you just don't have peace today. Maybe you have sorrow today. Maybe, maybe you just feel like you don't have God. I'm telling you, God is ready to come and change the situation. El Gabor. He's on your side always. El Gabor. Always got to remember that. So today, Sunday morning, God is ready to help you and God is able. And I'm just telling you, if you're in a dark time, God can help. If you're in a storm, God can help. If you're unloved, God can help. He is, Paul said, to, for me to live is Christ. And for all of you that know this is a certainty, I want you to raise your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Would you do that for me? Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because He is El Gabor. He's mighty God. And He promises us eternal life. That's our number one thing that we're going to do here. Noah, put that one up there for me. He is able to do what He promises. Uh, John 10 says this, And I give them what? Forever. How long is eternal? How? Forever. 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 Look at your neighbor and say forever. forever. You have eternal life. Listen, I don't care if you have nothing else here on this earth. You have a lot. You've got eternal life. We'll go ahead and read the rest of that. And it said, They shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So much for people that said, Oh, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Listen. If you've got Jesus Christ, you're saved. I don't care what they say for you. 
my Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to what? Snatch them out of his Father's hand. Woo! That's a good verse of Scripture. Y'all going to have to wake up over here and start clapping a little bit more. That's a good Scripture. He is El Gabor. And it's because why? He keeps promise. He's never went back on anything that he's promised. He never goes back on his word. He never fails. He never gives up. He knows all things from the beginning to the end. And once you're under his care, then he never, no one can snatch you out of his hands. Everyone say El Gabor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And he's got El Gabor.
out of that environment and put you in and put in a new life and clean you up. Take that heart of stone out of you and put off a, a heart of flesh in you. And it doesn't matter where you've been. God is ready for you to live eternal life. Now, you know, the hope of the gospel is really not so that we can go to heaven. You know that? A lot of people think, hey, if I can just get saved, and I got the ticket to heaven, I'm going to go on to heaven and, and to heck with everything else, right? That's not the hope of the gospel. You know what the hope of the gospel is? Is we have a mandate. We, we've been given a task to do for God. And uh, in John 14, says, I say, who, who believes in me, the works I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Now think about that. What did Jesus do when he was on the earth? Someone. What did Jesus do when he was here? Huh? He did that, but let's get more specifically. What did Jesus do? He healed. What else did he do? He taught us how to live. Because how to live, how about raising the dead? Did he do that? I mean, do you know the Bible tells us that Jesus did so many miracles that he could, they couldn't put them in a book? And you just read what that scripture said. The works that he did, we will do also. And we will do greater works than what Christ did. You know, that sort of blows my mind. I don't know about you, but it does me. Because you've been in some churches probably and you don't see many miracles, do you? You don't see much life sometimes. Sometimes you don't see anything going on. But we saw a miracle in this church Wednesday night. In yeah. fact, I saw more than one. I saw several. When the power of El Gabor, mighty God, comes in and falls on you, guess what? You can do greater works than what Jesus did. I want to share something with you. They're not here today. But we have this family. And uh, we were all prayed for. They were told to come down to the front if you wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. You believe in Christ, yes. you have the Holy Spirit. Yes. But this is a special feeling. Yes. This is an anointing. And after we got prayed for, uh, the pastor asked us to go out into the crowd and pray for other people. He said, pick five people, go pray for them. That's what I did. I prayed on several, and in rest, there were others here that did the same thing. I saw Maggie over in the corner by herself. Her grandbaby had been deathly ill all week long. She has RSVP. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a very severe lung problem for a baby. And the baby was preemie. She was in intensive care at Cook's Children's. She had a heart rate of 220. She had a high fever, and she's on forced oxygen. She can't be put on a ventilator because you can't do an intro on a ventilator. God spoke to me right back there where Billy is, and I saw her. I saw Maggie over in this corner, and he said, go pray for her, for her grandbaby. I went up to her. I said, we're going to pray that Everly is healed. We're going to pray specific prayers. Right, Manuel? Right. That's what we were talking about yesterday. Specific prayers. We want the baby to come off of this forced oxygen. We want her fever to drop. And we want her heart rate to drop. That was at 8 o'clock when I prayed that with Maggie right over back there in that corner. By the time I got home, I had a text from Maggie. She said, you know what? The doctor called... The mother, Melissa, said, you need to come back. Babies had to turn around. The temperature had dropped to normal. The breathing rate was normal. And she was off of oxygen. And she was taking out of the temperature there. Amen? And she was saying about the power of the elder born. And I, and I mean, and she said, you know, that happened around 8 o'clock. And so her daughter goes back up. The baby's home today. Amen. Amen. If you believe it, sometimes.
times it's really, it really happens. Amen. Uh, there were other things I'm not going to share with you. We don't have enough time here to do it today. But He came, Christ came, that you may have life. And what had it? Abundant. Abundant. abundant life. And some of this abundant <coughs> life is not sitting around on the couch <coughs> watching TV. The abundant life is getting out and going and putting yourself out there and praying for people and going and taking quilts and giving them to people that need them and don't even have family that come visit them. It's about us shining our life as a believer in Jesus Christ and changing the world in which we live. Amen? Amen. If you believe it, would you thank God and pass and give them to All he asks is that you have faith and trust in him. Do you realize that's really about all we have to do? Of course, love one another as we love ourselves. Yeah. And some of the people don't love themselves today. It's hard for them to love other people, but with Christ, you can. But we put our trust in him and we draw upon that power. And I'm just wondering, as we approach the Christmas holiday here in, in the next week, have you really done that in your life? Do you really believe that God is the mighty God? That He is the El Gabor? Because I don't believe some people do. I think some people just think of God as like a magical genie and then pull, pull Him out of a, a genie's bottle every so often. And I think that's totally far apart from what God really intended. Gabriel told Mary that she would have a, a, a child, a baby, and that he'd be the savior of mankind, and that he was great. He would be great to save mankind from their sins. And you know what she said? What'd she say? Okay, that's good. I'm going to believe that. You say, oh, that's so easy to believe because we read it all the time. We've read it for the last 50 years. This was the virgin birth. There was no man involved. You're telling me she just really believed it that easy? She said, okay, some of you would have struggles with that today, right? Because we're pretty smart when it comes to medical, you know, the medicine. But I'm just saying, do you really believe God is a mighty God? He can bring life from a man without another man involved. You know, that's a struggle in our lives at times. I just wonder how many here today have said okay to what God wants you to do. Are you saying, I just don't know about that, God. And Mary said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> you know? So number one, God is able to do what He promised. And the second thing, and the last thing, is God is able to help where we need to help. And sometimes, and I've been there and done it, if you've walked with the Lord very long, you, you might have felt this way. But we have all these promises, and it just seems like God is distant. It's like He's, he's far from you. When you pray, but you don't feel that power, it's like the heavens are brass. And you're thinking, well, why? Why, God? Why am I feeling like this? You know, I thought I was saved. I thought I had the heart of flesh, and, you know, I'm going to do greater things than you, and mightier works than you, God. Why? I mean, Jesus, why? Why, why do I feel like this? But He is the mighty God. He, he can help you right here today. If you don't know where to turn in your life, would you turn to God? Amen. Would you turn to Christ? Amen. You can even spill your guts out to Him and say, Hey, I, I don't know. You know, Lord, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. But sometimes, believe it or not, I feel that way too. Psalm 46 tells us this. 46.1. Oh, uh, no, there's one too. Psalm 46.1 says, The Lord is my refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. How, how long is ever-present? Forever. He's your refuge. He's your strength. Eternally. That's what, that's what the psalmist was saying. He's like a right now kind of help. That's what God is. And in, in, uh, in other words, He'll draw close to you if you need, if you need Him. And blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Draw on that one a lot for the past couple of weeks. 
He's a refuge. He's a strong tower. Psalm 91, 2 says this. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom him I will trust. So in other words, whatever problem you got, whatever need you have, God is able to meet the need you've got. He's a mighty God who heals the sick, binds up the wounded, works miracles today. He's the same mighty God that offered you eternal life forever with Him. Highly favored, redeemed, reign in life. That's, that's the same God. And He calls us His son and daughter. Look at a John 1. As many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in His name. And I hope you believe this Christmas season that we're not just talking about a little baby in a manger. We're talking about the mighty God of that baby. The one who can do all things. The one that Jeremiah said, Ah, oh, God. That's who we're talking about. Right. He calls you his son or his daughter. Woo, that makes me happy. Yes. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I thought about this one. John said that he was in the world... And the world was created by Him. Yes. In the same hands that Mary held when He was just a little baby, uh, Isaiah says this. He said, uh, 40, Isaiah 48, 45, I'm sorry. I am the one who made the earth and created people to live on. With my hands, think about that, the same hands. You know how you do a little baby and they grab your finger? Same hands that grabbed her finger, stretched out the heavens. All the stars are in my command. In fact, the Bible says he names the stars. He's got a name for all these stars. Isn't that amazing? The same baby that was in that cradle created all this. Psalm 139 says, uh, You form my inward parts, you saw my unformed substance same baby that we're talking about today, that we're celebrating the birth of. And 33 years old, he would hang from a tree and he would fulfill his destiny and he created a way where every person in this room can have all of this eternal life that he's promised us. Do you understand? Do you comprehend that you're no longer under punishment? That you're no longer condemned anymore. Listen, you, you don't have to feel guilty about your past. Amen. We've all done things that's not good. Come on. And, and, and you know, it's like these Hallmark shows that's on TV. Have you all ever watched a Hallmark show? Anyone here besides me? And I don't watch them hardly anymore. Because all you do is, is there's someone there just bawling and squalling and feeling guilty and all that. And pretty soon I'm thinking, where's Jesus in all of this? You don't have to feel guilty no more. Don't feel guilty. Look at your neighbor and tell him, don't feel guilty. Jesus is paid for all that. Woo. Listen, feeling guilty might make people feel better, but you don't have to feel guilty anymore. And if you're going to stay over there and feel guilty and bawl and squall about yourself, I'm going to stand over here in, in the land of freedom. That's what I'm going to do. Don't listen to those voices that tell you, Shame on you. Look at what you did. Look at what you used to do. Now you're standing up here trying to act all holy. You don't think the devil don't talk to me like that sometimes? Come on. He's going to talk to you that way too. Amen. Don't listen to that. Say, hey, I rebuke you. I don't receive it. In Jesus' name, get out of here. Amen. And he'll leave. Yeah. So listen, Romans 8, 1. I'm leading up to this. There is what? Therefore, now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Tell you, David, you're not condemned any longer. In Christ, you're all right. I can tell you. You got freedom. You got abundant living. Greater works that you're going to do than Jesus did when he was on earth. That blows my mind. Come on. Christmas is not about just a baby born in mysterious circumstances. The Christmas story is about a mighty God who took the form of a human, a, a baby, 
so that He can tell you that He loves you and point us to eternal life. That's what Christmas is about, abundant living. And recognizing Christ is essential to our faith. So who's the baby? Come on, tell what's the name we've been working on? El Gabor. That's who he is. He's mighty God. When sickness comes, you know what he says? By my stripes you are healed. That's what he says. Even if your eyes tell you different, you're still healed. Amen? My, wife, my mom and I talked about that. You know, she has radical hypertension. And she came down for prayer and healing Wednesday night. And guess what? She had two nights of radical hypertension after she had prayed that. And you know what the devil told her? You're not really healed. Is she healed? Yes. Yes, she's healed. You've got every spiritual blessing. Even if your eyes stay differently, don't stop taking your meds, but you're healed. That's what it is. When hate rises against you, you know what, what Jesus told us? He says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. You can condemn that hate when people hate on you. You don't have to receive that. That's what he says. When storms come on in your life, and the doctor says, hey, you've got six months to live. You know what you can tell them, Roger? Peace be still. That's what he said. See, we take the word and, and we voice it. We repeat it because there's, there's power in those words. When, when people come against you and your life's gone to hell and you've got chaos everywhere, you know what you can say to it? Peace be still. Amen. You can say, God is my refuge and strength. I'm going to stay in the refuge here. I'm not standing out here where the storm is. Stay in the boat. The men do. When death comes, you know what Jesus said? Yeah. I've defeated the last great enemy, which is death. In fact, he, he gave us, he said, uh, I think he said, Lazarus, come forth. Yes. Did he? Yes. Right? Well, death was overcome. Yes. Death is defeated. That's what Christ tells me. His word never changes. His love always endures. His grace is sufficient. He is El Gabor. If you believe it, we got to we got to This is worth shouting for. This is worth saying Hallelujah because He is El Gabor. And if you don't believe that, you need to come down today and let's pray about it. Amen. That's what you got to do. Listen, He is the supreme authority. Man might say one thing. Law might say this. The doctor might say that. But guess who the ultimate authority? El Gabor. I hope when you leave today, you're, you're just spouting off that word to everybody you need. I serve El Gabor. <laughs> All right. So I, we're going to do something. I like... Uh, do, do you know how to play that that we talked about? I think I can. We're going to sing a song, okay? And it's a song that Michael W. Smith uh, made popular. But I've changed some of the lyrics. So bear with me. And I'm going to ask you to do something for me. Can y'all help me sing it? I want you to say it. Sing it like it's real. Y'all can come on up You know this song, anyone? Raise your hand, child. While they're playing, I want to ask you a couple of questions, okay? And then we're going to sing. If you're in this house today, if you've never known El Gabor, I want you to come down to the front and let's pray about it. If you're in this house today, and you really don't know the power of El Gabor, I want you to come down and let's pray about it. If you want El Gabor to work in your life, I want you to come down and pray about it. If you're facing mountains, if you're facing health issues, if you're facing uncertainty, El Gabor can do it. 
we're going to have a time of prayer. This is going to be an invitation. And one of the things that I have to keep repeating to myself is also a time that you join this church. If you want to join Greenbrier and be a part of a body of believers who love Jesus and care for the Lord and we're watching miracles occur, it's time for you to come down and draw a line in the sand and say, I'm serving El Gabor at Greenbrier Baptist Church. So this is what we're going to do today. Now we're going to sing. Ready? I'm